First question is from Cape 25 Is it possible to build the calves or is it genetic? Oh, good Skip old calves. I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw this to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They've actually done studies on this. The hardest so, workers. First off, uh, genetics uh, have a huge influence on all muscles of your body in terms of how effectively or how well they build or respond to exercise. And it's not more or less for calves, right? That's the, that's the question. Is it, is, are calves special in the sense that they're more resistant to building or growing? And no, they've actually done studies on calves and found that that's not the case. Here's what's probably the case. What's probably the case is it's most likely that the calves are the most skipped body part that people have in their training. And that's just a fact. Like, most dudes that work out consistently, if they were to, if somebody tracked how many times they skipped a body part, I would, I bet you calves are number one, legs are probably number two, and core is probably number three, I would guess. And so when you do all those years of training, you know, if you trained your calves like you did your chest or your shoulders, you probably would see similar I think, I think I could make a mm. case that they are uh, unique and, and in the sense that, I think of all the muscles that are challenging for someone to build, they're the ones that's most commonly that people do not take through full range of motion. That's and, another and, good. That's a good point. And somebody like Ben a lot of choppy reps, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And Ben Pakolsky likes to talk about how you know most muscles that are underdeveloped on somebody it, they have a a poor connection to that muscle at the end range of motion. So the 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 full and full flexion right of like your calves, which is standing all the way up on your tippy toes, and ask yourself. Unless you're playing basketball, jumping rope, yeah. or doing how sports, how often do you do that? How often do you get all the way up, uh, up on your toes like that? And I Only just think heels that, on the weekends. And I think that if you, <laughs> for most of your life, you don't do that, and then you go in the gym and you go to train that, that you just don't have that full range of motion. And just like what we say about squats, like you get so much more bang for your buck taking the body through its full range of motion. So I would make the case that uh, most people have a limited range of motion on their calves. People and don't, they don't get the stretch and yep. they don't get the squeeze. That's right. And part of that reason is because I th I think if you start training your calves, the potential to be able to, be able to use a lot of weight is really high. Like, oh, I could put so much weight on the standing calf machine, yeah. but then they start to cut the rep short. And mm -hmm. when I see people working out calves in the gyms, I almost never see full stretch Full squeeze. It usually looks like this kind of yeah. short kind of pumping motion. Now, of course, genetics play a role, but again, they play a role in all your muscles. I don't think there's a special, actually, again, studies actually confirm this. There is no special, you know, reason or case for calves being somehow more stubborn than other body, par body parts, you know, speaking, you know, generally. Now, what kind of genetics influence your calf growth? Well, there's, you know, muscle fiber type and density. There's also muscle belly length. This is a big one. What you'll notice is a lot of athletes uh, have shorter calves, and partially because shorter calves probably helps with locomotion and agility. Longer calves you'll see in sports that that involve more sturdy bases. So you'll find these in strongman athletes and and, and weightlifters and stuff like that. Um, long calf bellies you have bigger area to grow. So you know if you mm -hmm. have short calves you can build them all you want. You end up getting, ending up with this short kind of naughty naughty looking calf muscle yeah. well i also think like a lot of the explosive movement you know plays a factor in that with uh some of these athletic endeavors where you are on uh the the forefoot a bit and yeah. you're moving very explosively just like in sprinting you see the difference between you know those uh you know that muscle physique versus you know more of an endurance athlete uh but yeah i I think about that because it is definitely a genetic factor, but also to what you're doing in volume. Uh, like, so if I'm, when I was uh, training all the time in athletics, I was always trying to make sure that I was on the balls of my feet and was, you know, able to move laterally and, you know, forward and back, you know, with, with, you know, explosive uh, type of um, force. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, if you look at people's routines, you'll see like, 15 sets for back for the week and, you know, 12 sets for biceps for the week. And you look at calves and it's like three yeah, or six, or it's the one that they skipped. Well, and they then, don't treat it like they're actually trying to build look, just the calf. I'm totally guilty of this, 100%. And there was a period of time where I actually placed a very – like I, this was a realization that I had, or at least I was being honest with myself, and I said, you know what? I'm going to be super consistent. I'm going to ramp up the volume. I'm going to focus on the stretch, focus on the squeeze. I'm going to do lower reps and higher reps and different angles. And it was like a good, 
year and a half of really consistent calf training, and I gained like an inch and a half on my calves. And I, I thought, oh, my calves don't respond. I mean, the truth is I just don't focus yeah. on them as much. You know, the, the best hack I ever had for that, there was, and I think it was about a year and a half, almost two years. It was during when I was competing. Um, I decided, because that was an area of insecurity for me is my calves. So I decided I was going to work out in shorts year round, even <laughs> yeah. in the winter time. So I had to face that insecurity. And, my one, and it also would motivate me to do calves first in my workout. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, if I can get in the door and get to that calf machine right away, I get them pumped up so they don't look so bad. But the, And it made a huge difference in my calf size because, and it really had nothing to do with the, the hack that I found that it was that I was training my calves first yep. at every, almost every workout they were getting attention. And just I'd never paid that much attention to them before. And so I saw the greatest gains in that in that time period and realized like, okay, I don't have just terrible calves. It's just I haven't put the the effort into training them. And then doing things like really taking them through full range of motion and slowing the repetition down. Also, I never back then but or before then, I always trained like high reps, mm -hmm. uh, similar to like what people do with abs. I was not training. I wasn't strength training my calves. Yeah. I wasn't doing Putting five. Putting the substantial load on Yeah, it. I actually started doing five by five loaded like, you know, seated and standing calf raises and the combination of full range of motion doing the the heavy load and then prioritizing them in the front of my workout I, I, in a year's time i made some pretty good gains on my calves better than i was making in any other muscle group so i think that's probably a, a lot of it for most people is they just don't yeah. give it the same you attention know, you know a machine uh, two things gave me gave me the biggest gains one was a donkey calf machine love that because of the stretch you get at the bottom it's gnarly, and the squeeze is pretty gnarly there as well. And then the other one was blood flow restriction. Wow, did that make a difference with my calves? And I think it's just because blood flow restrictive training works better on the limbs anyway. And man, if you you use that knee wrap below the knee, right above the calf, and then do, do no weight and just rep out, the pump and the burn you get in your calves is just so intense. And I, I saw a difference doing that. Yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.